There is hardly any place more remote than the vast Yukon River Delta, where millions of salmon pass on their way upriver to spawn. It's Yukon, the monarch of salmon. That's up next on Chefs of Field. This is beautiful. Look at the color on this, the pink. You almost got like a little rainbow color going on here. Major funding for Chefs Afield is provided by Cascadian Farm, where our commitment to organic food and sustainable farming began in 1972 and still holds true today. Cascadian Farm, organic goodness from farm to table. And by And by Real California Milk and California's dairy families. These seals ensure dairy brands are made with 100% real California milk. More information at realcaliforniamilk.com. Additional funding is provided by the Park Foundation, dedicated to education, the environment, and quality television. The Yukon River. In the native tongue, the word Yukon means great river. It's as long as the Mississippi. It winds through Northwest Alaska's Delta and pushes out into the Bering Sea more than 20 times the volume of water that flows over Niagara Falls. Driving up this huge river twice a year is a magnificent creature, the Yukon King Salmon, with more than 30 times the fat of any other fish on the planet. At the mouth of the mighty Yukon are the Yupik people, descendants of those who settled here more than 10,000 years ago, living on virtually nothing except this extraordinary fish. We were short one year, one time after that, we didn't want that to happen. The salmon are born in the upper reaches of this river and its thousands of tributaries spread over an area the size of Texas and New Mexico combined, a place called the Yukon Delta. They swim out to sea and spend five years fattening up, gaining 15, 20, 30 pounds. Then the salmon return for the journey upriver to the exact spot of their birth, a journey of more than 2,000 miles. It would be hard to find any place more remote than this village, Imanic, Alaska, 300 miles from the nearest hospital. 900 souls who live in 200 houses with 200 boats. These are the Yupik Eskimos of the Yukon River Delta living nine months of the year on frozen ground and in the darkness, and in three months of Alaskan summer on a squishy marsh. For more than 300 generations, they have lived off this river at this spot. There is perhaps no place farther away from Imanic than Las Vegas, Nevada. And why Las Vegas? It's the desert. It's a place to prove a point. The point is, if we continue as things are today, some feel that all of the fish we eat will be commercially extinct by the middle of this century. I could show you a million fish that we're not even touching that are delicious. Chef Rick Moonen is a highly respected authority on seafood and sustainability, on presentation and on taste of fish dishes. His restaurant, RM, garnered awards and acclaim in New York City, and now in Las Vegas. Rick Moon into RM Seafood is a, a multi-layered seafood mecca. It's a sustainable seafood in the center of Sin City. Everything that's selected is from a sustainable source, meaning that it's not overfished, that it doesn't, that, that it's being caught in a responsible manner so it's not destroying the habitat of these fish so that they're gonna be diminished or, or eradicated or, or possibly you know, extinct in, in a matter of years. It's, it's about enjoying celebrating really super high quality seafood. Chef Moonen has caught and tasted and cooked all sorts of fish. And which of all of the fish did this chef declare the best I ever ate? But when it comes to Yukon River King Salmon from Mimonic, 
I have yet to find something that has topped it on my palate to this point in my life. And the opportunity to get to know the people that surround that, the treasure of the universe. Both the summer and the fish are approaching Imanic. Waiting too are the fish and game authorities who will decide on the number and size of the fish to be taken. All right, Rick, you gonna grab a fish? You can grab it by the gills is the easiest. This is gorgeous, this one. I'll take that right. one. You'll take that one? <laughs> okay. These spots here, that's uh, um, indicative of a, of a Chinook, right? Correct. Chinook salmon is also known as king salmon. Its Latin name is Ancorincus shawitsha. Oh. Try and spell that one. There you go. Uniformed officials from the state of Alaska, from the U.S. government and Canada, will announce the season, when, how many, and how big the fish must be for two harvests. The first, the Yupik people, how many they need to live on for a year to survive as they have for hundreds of generations. And a second, more modern commercial harvest for those Yukon salmon to be taken for sale beyond this tiny outpost. Give me an, um, a, a rundown of uh, why you're going through this, this whole process. It seems like a lot, a lot of work. It is a lot of work. The Yukon River is huge. It's over 2,000 miles long, right. and the delta itself is massive. And to get an idea on run timing and abundance, those are the key things for us to manage the fishery. We have this test fishery. We sample them for age, mm -hmm. sex, length, weight, and girth. Okay. And that enables us to do comparisons to the historical data. Right. So it gives us an idea, are the fish coming in as expected? Are they smaller than normal? Is this something to be concerned about? And it also gives us an indicator of run timing. How do you determine and, and, and create a balance between uh, making sure that the local community gets enough to feed their family and that there's enough for commercial fisheries. That's the tricky part. We want these fish populations to be sustainable into the future. We want to make sure that enough fish, it's our priority use, that we get enough fish on the spawning grounds to ensure future generations. Everybody's waiting patiently. We don't know why the runs haven't been coming back as expected. We don't know if it's attributable to some ocean, oceanic environmental factor or we have a pollock fishery out Bycatch. in the ocean. and. And the incidental harvest of Chinook, the bycatch in that fishery, has climbed to record numbers over the last couple of years, topping out at over 140,000 Chinook salmon last year. So that's something that is cause for concern because they are harvesting some Western Alaska stocks. Well, that's, that takes a dent out of the population. Absolutely. Among the Yupik, fishing is done on the honor system. Each family takes what it needs to live on. The Yupik live almost entirely on this fish, there is virtually nothing else that they eat, aside from the occasional caribou or seal. Hey, how's it okay. going? Good. Rick, what's your name? Bill, Bill Charles. Hey, Bill. You ready to go out fishing? I can't wait. Are you kidding? Yeah. I'm excited. Well, this is it, Rick. How many king salmon can this boat hold? I mean, what's the maximum capacity? Oh, my goodness. Uh, I feel happy with uh, 70. It's been a long time since they got that much. We tie this fisheries to our economy, our subsistence. Everything's around fish out here, and this is important. The men launch to make the catch. The others in the village, young and old, disperse to a half dozen or more fish camps, as they call them, to be ready to clean, cut, preserve, smoke the harvest, the provisions for winter. Life on this water is what tells Billy Charles where he is. No maps or charts, no GPS. The merest glance at the horizon all the same to an outsider, tells the fisherman okay. precisely where he is. OK, cowboy. All the way from where, <laughs> Las Vegas? Billy, where are we now? Like five, six miles from the Bering Sea. This is a big eddy. Easy to let, let go out really slowly. You want to go across the yeah, river north straight. Yeah. Is this right? Yeah, we're good. We're good? That's called a gill net, right? Any ideas that the fish swim into them and they get caught up in the in the, the, the little holes in the net, right? Right. First time I've ever got on the water with a net. I'm a fishing pole guy. <laughs> it's kind of interesting, though. The nets are out. Now, it is as it has been since humans began fishing. Wait for the fish. We're looking for bobbing on the lines right now. Uh, see if we're getting anything. I see something in there. It could be chump. And it's starting to bob real heavy. Then. Uh, there's a good chance it's a king. Who normally drives the boat? My wife or one of my boys. You know, everybody in the family gets involved one way or the other. How many fish does a, does a typical family take out? 
to support themselves through uh, through the winter. Now we're having to put away about 300 fish to provide for a family of six. It's a lot of pressure on you, right? There, to to there, uh, there, there provide for your pressure. for your existence. Exactly. You see, you see that? You see that bobbin right about in the middle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It looked like a chum, though. The <laughs> chef is eager to get his hands into the work. Billy, I want to catch great, one. Great. This lead line gets heavy after a while. After a while? Yeah. Hell, my arms are tired now. <laughs> what do yep. you got there? And this is a chum. It's a small chum. But you know, <laughs> even chum out here in the Yukon Delta have high oil content. But you know, this uh, it's good fish. Uh, this is what we like to dry because they cure a lot faster than uh, the king salmon. It's a beautiful fish. The chum, or kita, is a good salmon, excellent indeed. But noble as it is, the chum is no king. The two swim the same waters, but the far heavier king builds enormous stores of fat, which to the chef, to the gourmand, gives it a taste that is simply incomparable. Come on, baby, we're dragging something. The fish that would come to my restaurant, this is exactly the same method you'd be fishing right here. Right. Yes. There you go. That's yes, a nice that's one. That's a big one. I we were dragging something. That's huge. That's Hello, that's baby. That's 25. This is what we've been looking for. Yeah. Oh, I knew we were dragging something. Yeah. yeah. Now we're talking. We're dragging something. Yeah, we're dragging we're something. We're dragging there two you. kings. Woo-hoo. Hey, man. Now, this is hey, buddy. Good. This is a beautiful a silver thing. break. Look at the size of this. In they come, the king salmon, the Chinook. Fruit of the great Yukon River, Something the largest of all up. salmon. It's not a snake, it'd be a chum maybe, but it's a king. It's another king, yes. Oh. Right. Look at this, this is, this is beautiful. Look at the color on this, the pink. Yeah. You yeah. almost got like a yeah. little rainbow color going mm -hmm. on here. Some incredible coloration here. Explain to me how I'd recognize this as a king salmon. Well, first thing is the size, of, you know, it's a lot bigger. They're darker and they got darker spots. Wider in the tail end. It's a gorgeous mm -hmm. fish. That's a good fish. I like this one. I want to take a bite out of it. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good fish. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So this is what's kept the Yupik community going for 10,000 years, right here. 4,000 two years, yes. It's unbelievable. This, this is good. This is great. There's a lot of meat here to be eaten. Yeah. I can't, can't wait. Let's cook it up. Let's go home. <laughs> Let's go. Billy Charles has been out all day. The fish are in the boat. The sky is taking on a darker cast. He is 400 miles or so from the Arctic Circle, so the sun will not set completely. He's done on the water, but plenty of work remains. Hi, Rick. I'm Grace. Hi, Grace. Great to meet you. She's going to do the filet, and I'll start on the king salmon. Oh, where am I fish for the winter? The ulu, a homemade knife, scrap metal with a wood or bone handle, sharpened on a stone and used to open and apportion the meat of the salmon. My mom taught me how to cut fish, and she told me, this is how you cut. We don't waste any of you it. use everything. Um, if you had to pick one part as your, as your favorite, what would it be? Well, everything would be my favorite part. I'd put, I'll cut your knife before you want to use my ulu. <laughs> Every day you learn something. It's doing good. Well, you better do it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to mess up your beautiful fish here. <laughs> But okay. still, even if you mess up, it still tastes good. Wow, I think you're hired. <laughs> you could cut all my fish now. All right, Billy. How'd I do? No, no. No? You got you to try to fix that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you got some duct tape? This, this, this is good. Mm. You know, compared to... I don't know what to compare it with, but look, 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 look. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. This has been yeah. a lot of fun. Great. Mm -hmm. Billy, you're the man. You're, you're the man. You're, you're the man. You're the fisherman. No, you, 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 you're the you, man. You, you catch them, you cook them. <laughs> the harvest is in. A year's worth of nourishment from the great river has okay, been so put away. Wow, the Yupik so catch went good. well this year, so what are we doing but here? authorities blocked well, any commercial okay, harvest. The outside world, fast developing a passion for the Yukon King salmon with all its taste and fat, got none this year. I just got back from the Yukon. I got the most amazing prize here with me that, that could ever come from anywhere in the entire world. It's the Yukon River Chinook or King Salmon. This fish that Chef Moonen is preparing 
was a gift from the Yupik. As you touch this fish, I feel like I've just got a ripe avocado on my hand. It's, it's, it's so, um, well, I hate to use the word greasy, but it's got great fat, and that's super exciting to me. Beautiful skin on still. I want to keep that skin um, intact because I want to crisp it up. I'm going to now just slice with the skin straight through. I'm going to cut it in half so that it's two portions. Take some kosher salt. Basically, we're going to lightly cure it. The salt is going to start to draw some of the liquid out. What it'll do is it'll firm up the flesh a little bit, but it's basically concentrating the flavor of the fish too. As the moisture comes out, it's going to mix with some of the smokiness of the tea that we're going to put on it. Lapsang Suchong is a tea. They smoke.